गुड मॉर्निंग टू एवरी वन आई मोहम्मद अब्दुल जुनेद कोऑर्डिनेटर वेलकम यू ऑल ऑन फोर्थ डे ऑफ वन वीक ए आई सी टी ई ट्रेनिंग एंड लर्निंग प्रोग्राम स्पॉन्सर्ड बाई अटल ऑन थ्री डी प्रिंटिंग एंड डिजाइन ऑर्गेनाइज बाई लॉर्ड्स इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी in association with center for product design development and additive manufacturing usmania university hyderabad so i request our speaker uh, uh, today we are going to have our speaker uh, dr shivram krishna uh, joint director uh, and associate professor from usmania university hyderabad so he will be giving lecture on 3d modeling Uh, on a bio uh, biomedical application of 3d printing so we have heard lot of uh, uh, about biomedical so we will going to have session on biomedical applications of 3d printing uh, thank you uh, uh, for junaid sir for uh, introducing me to the audience and also for giving the opportunity to share my on biomedical application i would like to present to you some of the live case study that we have done uh, i am not concentrating on how you do modeling everything because i would like to talk about uh, what are the how we have solved some critical cases using 3d print technology for biomedical application right so <clears throat> uh, this you know a doctor and engineer when they join together they they try to solve some critical cases so this is this is what 3d printing brings brings about different people uh, to come together and work to solve some critical cases for the help uh, applicable to the take an additional hand to the surgeon so you 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 help as an additional hand to the surgeon and <clears throat> why 3d printing in medicine is because for Uh, visualization curvilinear complex anatomy so for those things uh, you can use 3d printing just to understand very complex shape of the body a human body anatomy uh, you can see it and understand very easily with a 3d printed model and also you have a physical feel of the area of interest other one is you can easily communicate and educate the patient how that injury happened how that fracture happened what is the type of disease they are having all those things you can and also you can do diagnosis and surgical planning you can do that is uh, for uh, planning the surgery uh, complex surgeries you can use this as a patient model right so you can you can uh, the creation of customized prosthetics you can make uh, your own customized and accurate treatment of you can do that means uh, and uh, think about how you place implants everything that you can think about using this uh, technique technology right so the transformations you brought is from a x ray ct scan the Plans, human anatomy, surgical agents, the scaffolds and printed organs. the dedicated software like mimics a 3d then the cad map you convert into a stale file from the stale file you use a stale file already you know using an rp technology 3d printing technology rp rapid prototyping earlier it is known as rapid prototyping now it is 3d printing using this technology you produce the final product and that you do post processing that is you do cleaning curing or removing everything then you get the final model out of it This is a general procedure for creating medical models. So, what is the activities, input, output, instruments, actors are? So, for when you want patient, from the patient you get output a CT image. 
for that you use a tomography instrument and the people who are working there are radiologist and the surgeon then you have the ct image you model into 3d cad model using a dedicated software they use a computer have a 3d model uh, cad model is how you stay file then you using a stereolithography uh, you produce the rp model that is 3d printed model you produce and there you have the rapid protein expert and a surgeon they will be there will be doing that and then you have an rp model then you validate the rp model using uh, with the help of a surgeon you validate the rp model then you do virtual surgical planning on the rp model then you do software for stl editing and the computer graphic expert surgeon will be there along with you and then you do virtual surgical planning that is validating virtual surgical planning uh, with surgeons then the relevant uh, measures so what you take is physical simulation of surgical procedures everything you do as a surgeon and this is the patient you have uh, using everywhere you can see surgeon is along with you you will be you will be coming uh, as a computer graphic expert as a mechanical engineering and as well as a 3d printing expert you will be assisting doctors in various critical stages of his operation so that's what you can see in this uh, particular table right <clears throat> so let us see how we have solved using 3d printing this particular case study of orbital volume analysis in mid facial fractures using 3d printing technology right so what is that orbital volume is you see whenever there is a fracture at the bottom this eye gets dilated this eye will be getting uh, affected the eye region this is called orbital volume so what happens is this uh, this portion uh, of that because of the fracture the eye gets displaced because the eye gets displaced the vision affects so doctor has to restore it by by putting this uh, um, joining all these parts he will be able to re, uh, uh, perform operation joining this and after 3 months you will observe how this uh, uh, volume has restored so we are going again you take a ct scan and find out you compare this one with unfractured side this is called unfractured side all call as uh, what you call contralateral side this is called contralateral side so you take this contralateral side and using this contralateral side dimensions you measure this one and do this <clears throat> this uh, this is a part of uc minor research project and this is a motor vehicle how this happens is because of the motor vehicle accidents or domestic violence or sports etc this accident will happen and uh, this is what i am telling you the mid face region that is you have this uh, uh, region where this uh, actual fracture happens in that's called mid facial region <clears throat> so when you when you want to measure this orbital volume you use some landmark points called, called as the mid or medial orbit uh, any human body have landmark point this is called medial orbit this zygomatic suture the supraorbital foramen this intraorbital foramen you measure this distances measure the volume this contralateral side you measure the volume and this side you measure this volume with, uh, from this landmark point this landmark point will be pointed by the will be given by the doctor and we will measure this so we can say before operation how this amount of volume increase naturally because of this deformation the volume will increase so how much is the volume increase because of this uh, deformation so that uh, you can take uh, and this uh, what happens is uh, this volume you compare with this normal volume so you find out which is uh, what is the percentage of restoration you can do here so that's what happens here so zygomatic frontal suture uh, these are the points you have here right so the main aim of this research work is to evaluate the orbital volume during mid facial fractures using additive manufacturing technologies and uh, the eval evaluation of orbital volume is done by measuring the dimension between the fixed landmarks on both 3d printed and 3d cad model of the fractured skull before and after operation and then compared with the unfractured side of the skull to establish the percentage of restoration so in the present work we considering a 28 year old male patient who has sustained a severe, inju severe injuries on the mid face uh, we taken the help of s face medical college uh, hospital i think uh, speaker abhinandan was there he worked with this i worked with him and uh, we have done this uh, work so this is how the fracture happened to this eye of this person this uh, left and uh, frontal and right lateral you can see <clears throat> For this, we collect the CT scan image of the patient in DICOM format from SOS Medical College. Then 3D modeling using medical imaging software. Then you 3D print the skull using FDM 3D printing process. And you evaluate the orbital volume with 3D printer scan 3D CAD model. And you do analysis and validate the results. So you collect the CT scan image. Once you collect the CT scan image, 
then you, you are these are the various software that we are going to use like radium dicom you are in less blender autodesk mix mixture flash print and starter one maxilla these are the various software that we are using here and uh, what is the radium dicom you are is uh, using uh, simply you take the ct scan image and import into it you can have a quick overview of the 3d model of the ct scan such that the research can be carried out over the specific area of interest that's what you use the radium dicom you are and uh, then uh, the DICOM images are converted to 3D CAD model with the help of InVaseless 3, which is again open source software. So what are the various steps involved in doing this process? First step is the medical image coming from the CT scanner consists of grayscale information. First, the DICOM files are to be loaded into DICOM browser in InVaseless. So you incorporate into this InVaseless software these DICOM files. Then you after importing the files into the software, all the slices are shown in four windows. These are the four windows just like you have in your uh, conventional CAD software you have front view top view side view and isometric view here also you have axial view sagittal coronal and the isometric view so this uh, you get uh, from this you get uh, this is like your top top view front view side view so this is the top view this is the side view this is the front view and uh, based on which you can understand what is your region of interest uh, what is the area in which you want to build the implant or develop the picture so you try to select this crop it and select so that you get finally how you get one is you select the threshold value so for each uh, part of the body, human body you have some threshold value nothing but you have pixel when you take a ct scan you have what different layers uh, so each one will have <coughs> what you have is the picture uh, uh, the photo the image will be in the store in the form of pixels the values so the bone will is having higher value so it appears bright you can see the green color bone is having higher and other tissues will have different colors right so what is your region of interest accordingly you have to select that range once you select the range only that that portion will get a uh, growing and the other portion will get eliminated segmentation will done other portion will be eliminated that's what happens here so why you what you have done we have selected bone as a preferred metal because our uh, fracture happened to the bone so you take that bone and you obtain threshold value of minimum 226 maximum 3071 and you define the bone region you get this shape you get this uh, particular object this is what you got here after selecting this range these are the only pixel values that we recognized right and then we have exported the 3d surface and saved it as dot stl format uh, such that 3d cad model can be 3d printed so you have done it and cleaning the unwanted region discontinuous areas using blender software so using blender software computer graphics software use it for creating animated films visual effects and etc you import the dot stl file into the blender software right then uh, cleaning the unwanted regions you remove the unwanted regions discontinuous areas using blender software then you get what you call <coughs> Uh, unwanted regions you get uh, invert the selection this will select all the unlinked one that is all discontinuous points you get here so these discontinuous points you have to remove you have to eliminate all of them so this eliminate all of them then you create you join and deleting the unwanted areas gives a finer finish to the 3d cad model which helps in building a perfect 3d medical model so you remove this unwanted region so you get this image but uh, how to fill up this unwanted region again you are going to use another software called uh, Autodesk Mesh Mixer that will be inspecting what are the repairs and errors, what are the missing things that are there here. Those things it will uh, select and remixes with uh, specialized tools for 3D printing, right? So before you 3D print, it will try to fill up those discontinuities which are removed um, and the creation of 3D mashups. It is used to work with triangular meshes and refine the 3D model, import the HTL file into Mesh Mixer software. Then go to analysis section. In the left plan, click, uh, click on inspector. This will show all the errors present in the STL file. Now click on auto repair all. That will make to remove all these errors that you have here. So once you remove this, after errors are removed from the STL file, using mesh mixer software, you convert into export into STL file. So once you remove error, you export into STL file. Once you do it, then you slice and orient the STL file using flash print software. So before you print into the machine, as today as we discussed the process chain of 3D printing, before you print into the machine, you have to uh, slice and orient the STL file in using the flash prints. In the flash print software, you have to orient the STL file. Right. So you have to slice it and orient in the STL file with the proper layer thickness, etc. <clears throat> so these are the orientation we have. You have plane X, Y, Z, zero degrees, plane X, two seven degrees, different ways. So I can find out what is the build time and total metal consumption. So build time with this 
I selected this 21 over 16 minutes as the time for building the part. So now we have oriented uh, the part like this. You can see these are the support structures that are coming here. So if you see that uh, orientation selected in such a way that are minimum support structures. So if you have minimum support structures, uh, definitely you are a uh, part because if the support structure is there, you have to remove those things from the main part. So when you remove it, there is a point of conservation, kind of roughness. Uh, you have to do some post processing. So without affecting the part stability, you see that your support structure is uh, minimized, right? And then uh, you slice and orient the STL file using the flash screen software. Then we have sliced and oriented. I can know before the part is printed, I can get uh, 21 hours, 16 minutes is the time that print time. And metal is 41.52 meters. So this is the machine in which I am going to be part. So this is what uh, printing. You get this part. Pre-operative medical model in flash watch printer. So this is the pre-operative medical model you get here. And this is what I got the entire uh, before operation. How that fracture happened to understand that this is how I got the part. So this. Uh, we will be giving it to the doctor. Now, doctor will be present, uh, selecting these landmark points on the con. This is called contralateral side, and this is your actual fracture region. You will measure the distance between them. So, you will estimate what is the volume or, or inside this with, without frag normal eye. But here, you will be before after fracture, uh, what amount of volume that uh, replaced. Naturally, this volume will be higher than this. Now, perform operation for the patient and put all the mini plates etc perform it and see that this uh, volume gets uh, for months again we will take a CT scan image and again we build this already we got this there is no, no fracture on this side three months we will take the printout and the so left side i have taken now i am taking the same way i will do converting the STL file things I do and this is the left portion of the thing I get here. The printing process post operative medical on flash for estimated time 10 hours 11 minutes and estimated metric 19.15 meters I got here. So this is what you can see after the operation after three months see how that bone has grown and these are the mini plates actually there are 10 mini plates which are fixed because we have printed in our FDM 3D printer we got this as a uh, poly FDM, PLA material only. But this is how this joint, this skull portion has been joined. And, and again, you will take, put the landmark points here and uh, measure the distance, you measure the volume, right? So the first thing, and we put both of them, and uh, these are the landmark infraorbit or for medial orbit and zygomatic. I have taken this. And then I measured all these distances. So you can see how we use the digital vernier calipers and measure all the distances of the points and uh, both the uh, left and the right eye we measured and even we use a software also in not only 3d printed we start a one software and measure this uh, distance volume on the contralateral side measure the volume of the um, fractured side before operation then same thing i measured uh, uh, after operation also we measured the fractured side right so what we got is before op operation before operation um, after injury fracture this amount of volume got 29.771 this is the volume of the contralateral set 27.086 this is on the using this software i got this right similarly after operation after the three months we measured this and so it has 27.086 earlier it is 29.7 so what we concluded is from the above results it is concluded that the Orbital volume of unfractured orbit, fractured orbit before operation, fractured orbit after operation is found to be 21.04 cc, 29.04 cc, and 21.69 cc respectively. That means what you can see the <clears throat> unfractured side volume is 21.04, and the fractured side before operation is 29.04. After three months of uh, after operation after three months, it was measured to be 21.69 cc. So you are able to restore to 91.88%, which is a good sign of restoration. This we got in the 
3D printed model. But in the CAD model also, we have done the same way, but we found the restoration is to 90.67%. So we can say the 3D printed model has given better accuracy than your CAD model. This is how 3D printed model helps in violating the orbital volume during mid, mid, mid facial fracture. Like this, we have done for 20 cases too, so that we can, so we can generate a uh, procedure we can tell doctor how best way you can you can improve the operation performance so that this restoration can be improved further to 95 96 so that it will be almost normal like the original one that's what our aim is so this is how 3d printing helps in orbital volume analysis so let us see the case to development of a 3d printed model for cranioplasty surgery so you can see cranioplasty is defined as a neurosurgical project to cover an injured bone in the skull this procedure is carried out. So cranioplasty is nothing but the skull. If you have some injury, in that injury portion, you have to put an implant. So that implant, you have to do it. This procedure is carried out in order to protect and restore intracranial structures and to restore the appearance and psychological safety of the patient. So you see in this case, a patient who, who's uh, got injured here to the left parietal region, uh, you can see this is the left side parietal region of his skull. So uh, here, you have to... Uh, put an, uh, you see the below this is simply skin was stitched to it and uh, you can see there is a complete uh, uh, implant you have to fix here, right? So this, uh, our uh, idea is how to, we have to develop this implant, right? So for this, we can the 16 year old patient was there and uh, what is the, the physical model? We are going to create a model of this one. That is, this is, we use a polyamide SLS technology, we can create this model of this and this can be used as an implant indirectly you can make it as a pattern and uh, uh, and make a mold and in that uh, using this pattern you can make a mold and once you remove this pattern you pour the biocompatible material like polymethyl methacrylate uh, that will be used for a bio uh, cranioplasty surgery right so traditionally we asked doctor how they used to perform this operation without 3d printing earlier they used to put an on the head and uh, a basket and apply algae remove hair and apply algae and with the skill set of the doctor, the highly professional doctor, the senior doctor, they used to have their own skill set and they used to take an impression of this, how that fracture happened. So with this, they will use to understand, okay, this is the type of uh, thing you have. But uh, what is the problem with this is, it all depends on the skill of the doctor, not so accurate. And also, because it is not accurate during the operation, they have to do some filing, some other work, extra work they have to do. So that is continuing a lot of time. The other thing is, the patient before the actual operation is performed is made to sit in the operation theater for getting this impression itself. For getting impression itself, he has to wait for eight hours, nine hours, like that. So that is again agony for the patient uh, for him, right? And so that case, what we have asked is doctors to give the CT scan image. So uh, he has given the CT scan image. And I told in the project, earlier project, we told how we have done the biomedical modeling. Applying the given the threshold value, that is a bone in our case, so using the threshold value, now we are able to we are able to gen, generate this model, right? <clears throat> so this model is generated. <clears throat> sir, I am audible, sir. You are audible, Hello? sir. You are, you are audible. Sir, you are recording. Your recording is still on, sir. So, so uh, sir, I'll I'll cut later. No problem. Or I have to stop here only. You stop here only. Sir. Okay. Sir. Then you can record it. Surgery. So generally our human body, our spine is very important portion of the human body, which will support the entire body. And uh, here you have different regions of the spine, cervical vertebrae, thoracic vertebrae, lumbar vertebrae, and sacrum. So lumbar vertebrae, we have five, one, two, three, four, five. So the entire body weight will come here. And uh, there is always a scope of degeneration. So you can see here, the lumbar spine, you have first lumbar, second lumbar, third, fourth, fifth lumbar, and intervertebral disc you have in between these lumbars. So, this intervertebral disc uh, will be uh, creating, uh, right? So, uh, after degeneration, what happens is I'm going to show you, right? So, this is how it appears. Inside this one, you have a what you call a nucleus like thing, a, a gel like substance will be there which will be helping as a lubricant, right? So if this gel-like substance, because of de degeneration, this analyst ring, it gets some cracks. This will, uh, this gel will come out and press the nerve. 
So behind your this one, you have a tunnel through which all nerves will pass from your head to other portion. So this will come and hit this uh, what you call the nerve. So because of which the blood flow will stop here. So spinal nerve blood flow will stop. So this is a normal disc. This is a degenerative disc. This is a bulging disc, etc. So what happens? Let us see with this video. Let us understand how this operation happens. Atlantic Spine Center offers endoscopic lumbar discectomy. Are you able to hear the voice, sir? The spinal yes, column sir, yes, or sir, backbone yes, is one of the most important okay. parts of your body. It provides the main support, allowing you to stand upright, bend, and twist. Thirty-three individual bones interlock with each other to form the spinal column. The vertebrae are numbered and divided into regions. C1 through C7, cervical vertebrae, form your neck, support your head and neck, and allow you to nod and shake your head. T1 through T12, thoracic, that's the 12 vertebrae that are joined by ribs to form your rib cage. L1 through L5, lumbar, your five sturdy lumbar vertebrae carry most of the weight of your upper body and provide a stable center of gravity when you move. Five vertebrae of the sacrum and four of the coccyx are fused. It makes up the back wall of your pelvis. Between each of the movable vertebrae is located the intervertebral disc. Intervertebral discs consist of a thick outer layer with a crisscrossing fibrous structure, annulus, that surrounds the soft gel-like center, the nucleus. Discs function like shock-absorbing springs. The annulus pulls the vertebral bodies together against the elastic resistance of the gel-filled nucleus. When you bend, the nucleus acts like a ball bearing, allowing the vertebral bodies to roll over the incompressible gel. Each disc works in concert with two facet joints, forming a spinal motion segment. The biomechanical function of each pair of facet joints is to guide and limit the movement of the spinal motion segment. The surfaces of the joint are coated with cartilage that helps each joint move smoothly. Directly behind the discs, the ring-like vertebral bodies create a vertical tunnel called the spinal canal or neural canal. The spinal cord and spinal nerves pass through the spinal canal, which protects them from injury. The spinal cord is the major column of nerve tissue that is connected to the brain and serves as an information superhighway between the brain and the body. The nerves in your spinal cord branch off to form pairs of nerve roots that travel through the small openings between your vertebrae, intervertebral foramens. This is the condition of a normal lumbar intervertebral disc. As a disc degenerates and breaks down, the inner core can leak out through the outer portion of the disc. This condition is known as a disc herniation, which puts direct pressure on the nerve. Lumbar herniated disc symptoms include low back pain, legs and buttock pain, leg numbness, and tingling. Endoscopic lumbar discectomy is a minimally invasive procedure for treating lumbar herniated disc. First, a thin guide wire is placed so in the control down to the end. This is how it happens. This gel will come out and press the nerve, and the blood flow will stop here. So now you have to remove this uh, excess one. What the gel is there? Level of the spine. A tapered dilator is inserted over the guide wire. A small tube is inserted over the dilator to create a portal to the herniated disc. The endoscope is placed through the tube, and the discectomy is performed. Using special instruments, your surgeon can now microsurgically remove the herniation, thereby relieving nerve root compression. The incision is closed with a stitch or two, and the procedure is complete. Advantages of endoscopic lumbar discectomy include the following. Minimally invasive, short recovery, high success rates, minimal to no blood loss, preservation of spinal mobility, small incision and minimal scar tissue formation, Patients are typically able to go home in a few hours.
So here do you understand now the criticality of this operation? So our aim is now before the doctor performs the operation on the actual human being, he has to simulate, he has to practice on a kit. So our aim was to develop this kit, uh, lumbar dissectum epita. So uh, this uh, so that the young doctors who don't have the experience also can practice on this before they perform the actual operation. So we have constructed the entire model of uh, that spine, lumbar disc, L1, L2, L3, L5. Uh, already a model is there with the doctor. We reverse it. We scanned it, developed the model, and then we build up a part. So lumbar vertebral printed using ABS we made printed. And to distinguish different parts, we made with 3D printed this lumbar intravertebral, intravertebral disc using thermoplastic polyurethane. And 3D printed a spinal cord using thermoplastic polyurethane metal PPO. We made both of them. Then we assembled them. And then uh, we have done this work. And we have to put in a box. And so that uh, uh, the, the inside this uh, box, you know, that uh, the doctor will be putting a needle and uh, planning the rehearsal, the entire thing here on the kit. So that's what you can use 3D printing for that application. Let us see how additive manufacturing can be used for uh, uh, sale of solving this conjoint pin uh, separation case. Let us see how we can use it. <coughs> Is a very interesting operation performed in 2002. Uh, the patients are Maria Teresa and Maria D. Jesus uh, were born in 2001 in Gautamela. So together they weighed 4.4 pounds at birth and despite their small size, they are very healthy but except for being joined at head. So over the past years, the girls have remained healthy and happy but they have been severely restricted by that. They cannot move easily, right? So the challenge for the physician is separating the conjoint twins is one of the most complicated procedure imaginable. You have intertwining bones, nerves, blood vessels, and other tissue pores in common between both these girls. Uh, forces doctors planning such an operation to abandon everything they know of normal anatomy and chart from scratch, the way each of these unique pairs are arranged. But the veins that drain the blood were interwoven and fed into each other's circulatory system. The most complex part of the operation would be to sort out these veins and reroute each girl's blood supply. So here, IIT manufacturing plays very important in planning this subject. So they have taken X-rays that showed the girl had a separate fully developed brains, but also has crisscrossed blood vessels. Tracking those blood vessels on the two-dimensional X-ray is very impo is impossible. So the surgical team, which was headed by Dr. Henry Kavarmota, director of craniofacial surgery at University of California, Los Angeles, and Dr. George Lazarus, Director of Pediatric Neurosurgery at the Mattel Children's Hospitals. So the doctor and the team had used rapid prototype previously and convinced the lead surgeon that such models might be useful in this case, enabling the plastic surgeon to practice how to separate the two girls. So using 3D printing, they produced all these models and they uh, performed this uh, uh, operation, simulated this operation on the models. Then once they got counted, they during the operation also they have put the models along with that time. Then how to separate, how to separate, how to slice those two heads, separate those two heads is very challenging. So they have to do several rehearsals, different, different ways, so that the minimum damage happens to the uh, and then the patients, right? That's what is the aim. So they use mimic software for developing the 3D model. They use object tempo rapid prototyping system, as I have shown you in that uh, Hollywood movies. Object tempo rapid system building parts by selectively jetting tiny droplets of acrylic photopolymer and then curing the drops layer by layer. So, unlike stereography, which uses primary building material for supports that must be made, cut, or sand way. So, once a part is complete, this gel like support material can be wiped off or removed by using water. So, uh, object tempo three parts are built one of each girl's skull and one of the junction between the two. two. <coughs> so, you have the parts, so it don't, took 24 hours to build each of these parts. So each of the part they build 24 hours, they have sliced it, and they understood how these uh, interviewing things happen. A model of the region where the two skulls connected so that the surgeons could study the maze of the blood vessels. See how they are planning the surgery on this table. So a plastic surgeon rehearsed with the models to help plan how they would arrange to cover the main part 
lead surgeon henry comb or no matter how good out your 3d graphics are there is nothing like a model in your head so this is how the planning is done let us see this video how this uh, operation is done entire video it took the operation time was nearly 10 to 12 hours they took and during the operation they have put all these models beside that uh, table operation table they understood how to do this let us watch this video and understand how additive manufacturing can be used for separating this conjoint in such a complex operation. Their historic surgery now, are you able to see the video and the audio, sir? And the imagination of some of the world's greatest medical You are able to hear the audio also? These are two distinct personalities, two distinct human beings. That unusual situation of being... In a, in a biological prison, essentially. Maria Teresa and Maria de Jesus are joined at the skull, the rarest of conjoined twins, and the most difficult to separate. We could look at the venous system, which was the, the clearly the problem. The venous, the veins were connected between the two twins, the arteries were not. We needed to separate them because such twins typically die between ages 5 and 10 when the brains expand and start squeezing on each other. So this operation was necessary to give them a chance at a happy, healthy life. Two prestigious hospitals turned the twins down, but doctors at UCLA felt there was enough medical evidence to support a successful separation. Neurosurgeon Dr. Jorge Lazarus assembled a team determined to free them. I felt, uh, based on the confidence uh, transmitted by uh, Itzhak and John, that this could be possible, that this was possible that the surgical procedure was the, the ethical and the reasonable thing to do for those girls. Doctors took dozens of pictures, CAT scans, MRIs, angiograms, but they needed something more. A, a model which, which was built uh, of the um, heads them, themselves, showing essentially the point of uh, connection. So we finally hooked up with this firm, a BMI, Biomedical, um, you know, Marlene Incorporated in, in Boston, and they sent us the models back. From images sent by the doctors, biomedical modeling created a perfect replica of the twins' heads. These models are very important to doctors. They, for the first time, allow doctors to have a physical, three-dimensional visualization of the patient's particular anatomy. It was a difficult, labor-intensive process to build the perfect models. But hearing the doctors and the hospital at UCLA had donated their efforts, biomedical modeling decided they would donate their efforts to save the twins, too. Once we have the data, we bring it onto our computers, and we see the familiar CAT scan images that our people are accustomed to seeing. And we take those, and we filter out the parts and tissues that we want to be included in the biomodel. And once they approve it, we go ahead and we decide to fabricate it. And that's done, the computer model is then sliced back down into the similar layers that you see in the beginning where you see the cross sections of bone. And that's put onto a machine that literally builds up the model layer by layer out of plastic. So the layers are extraordinarily thin, uh, as thin as a human hair. And they start off usually as a liquid. And that liquid is solidified by ultraviolet light. And once it's exposed to the ultraviolet light in those patterns, they solidify and they stack one on top and they glue to the layer below. And then when you're done, what you have is an actual 3D plastic model of the anatomy. To coordinate the effort, biomedical modeling worked with Dr. Bill Clarehue, one of the nation's most respected anaplastologists. Dr. Clarehue builds craniofacial implants and prosthetics for American veterans. He, too, volunteered after hours to help doctors with the twins. And I was able to view the information on the computer and show the surgeons exactly what they're going to get as far as a 3D model is going to end up looking. We will remove the bone 60 percent after here. At we UCLA, know? neurosurgeons yeah, and bone. plastic surgeons work out so their strategy together. In the beginning, is this right. area exposed, and then the critical factor in trying to separate them was the blood vessels, and the neurosurgeons had sort of worked that out, and they thought that they could do that. Then it became a problem of getting everything covered. The twins were separated. They could not simply cut the skin right along where the twins' were, skulls were joined together. If they did that, they wouldn't have flaps of skin to cover the scalp afterwards and allow the twins to recover. Uh, these are the flaps that we've uh, designed based, um, based on this 
three-dimensional skull that's rendered from the um, from the CAT scan. It's interesting because they're using um, it's like paper cutouts. They're using felt to mark their flaps. I mean, it looks like you're playing with paper dolls, but that's what they're doing because yeah, that's the best and easiest operation way to do this. They could practice on the operation those skull models models this model. with their surgery prior to doing the surgery. I mean, how often can you hold? the skull in one hand and operate on the skull in the other. It just, this is the only way this can be done. The model of the head, please. Throughout the 23-hour marathon surgery, the biomass will be from beginning to end. First thing that will be done is this flap will be flipped toward, towards me. Right. These models that we did our flap designs on were made off of CAT scans, CT scans, uh, they're highly accurate. I mean, these models are very, very accurate. When the time came to make that first cut, we made it along the patterns that we had designed. And then we realized, I mean, th then it really sunk in on me was there's no turning back. And to have things turn out so well is very gratifying. To, um, to, you know, to see the impact on the world, I mean, literally on the world. I would have never in my wildest dreams guessed that it would have this kind of impact. We are really delighted to have been part of this very heartwarming story. Joined at the head, they would never be able to walk or stand or even eat normally. And were likely condemned to die between ages 5 and 10. Now they have a chance to be two happy, healthy individuals, and we look forward to hearing about their growing up and their successes in life. <laughs> Within months, they are on their way back to Guatemala. Two healthy little girls still on the mend, but with the promise of normal, healthy, and independent lives. So I hope you can appreciate now how 3D printing can be used for this very critical operation. Sure, sir. That was Are you able to see the screen, sir? That was very interesting. Yes, sir. I'm uh, I'm able to see. Yeah, that's what 3D printing helps in solving such very critical cases. Yes, sir, so sir. save the humanity. So IIT manufacturing has got the capability of saving the humans from all critical surgeries the difficulties you face. Yeah, another very small interesting case study we have done for functional female prosthesis with our BE student Shashank during his summer internship uh, he has done this work so you see um, the finger prosthetics you are there only in the cosmetic purpose the main of this project is design a finger and make it functional such that it can hold or grip objects the finger movement is achieved by motor and the finger is manufactured in 3d printing so for such cases, you require a full finger you have to make. So you have these parts and you made all these parts joined together and you can put wires across this and that can be controlled by a, a PCB uh, using which you can have the movement. I'm going to show that video also. This we have done in our lab. We have printed these fingers and joint and uh, this can be used for these people also. Let me show that video also. Finger we made, you connect it to the adreno board circle. Mm -hmm. it, it can this part of this finger is printed using 3D print. Connect. So, this is very crude stage, you have to further improve. You should get a signal from the brain, you should be able to operate. This is a further uh, work you can do. At present, this is the stage. This portion you can print in 3D printing. This is a small work we have done using 3D printing technology. So, with this, uh, I finish my. This what is the future of EM? This is called Gartner's 3D printing. So, what it says is initially for any new technology that comes, there is a lot of hype. You think it will solve every problem, it is so great, everything. But after some time, you find the limitations of those things. So the limitations makes it to come down. The, the demand of that will come down. But after some time, again, what happens? You overcome those limitations. And slowly, the graph will start picking up. So we are in this area. This is what we found 
the most recent graph published by the firm in 2017. So you can see, and this is what happened, this took more than 10 years to reach this curve. Uh, now we are in this stage, we are about to drop for disillusionment, you find oh, this is not working, so this technology like this, you get, but finally, once you start overcoming these limitations of the technology, so as on July 2017, we are now reaching the better saturation point, correct level, maturity level of the technology is coming. So 3D printing now, it is going to be there and it is going to solve a lot of cases, especially biomedical aerospace applications. It has got high potential application, automobile also, you see a lot of cars, automobiles you nowadays, you see. Uh, you do see that there is a regular change in the tail lamps or in the ORV, OVRMs, overview rear mirrors or the, the front bumper or the dashboard, everything now is it's a car is also evolving itself like anything like cell phone. Every 15 days you get a new model, car is also every month you are getting a new model which looks different. How this is possible, how you can do it very fast, the change in the product design. So earlier also your designers are there who can create things with your creative idea but the manufacturing is unable to support such such creativity is unable to produce such complex products but using 3d printing we can produce such a uh, complex products within less time so that's how the new technology is helping uh, the evolution of new types of cars otherwise earlier if you make a chain tail lamp using the conventional process you will take a lot of time to produce that one uh, because converting that idea to a form, physical form itself is a difficult task. In IT manufacturing, you may ask questions, sir. It cannot do mass manufacturing. Yes, using IT manufacturing, you can produce a prototype, make a mold, injection mold, anything. And then from there, you can produce things in large number. So making that initial mold, which is complex, uh, using conventional method is very difficult. But using IT manufacturing, you can make it and then you can run that. So this is the future of IT manufacturing. It's called Gartner's. 3D printing car. So I thank my director, principal, and head of the department for their support in conducting this research. I also thank the team of doctors who worked with us. So uh, like Satish from CMF, Rajesh from Neurosurgeon Ashoda Hospital, Suresh Kumar, Maxwell Facial, Dr. Abhinandan Porturi, who is also another speaker in this program for their support. We are all work together as team and solve such critical cases. Thank my students also and team of CPTDM, all the students who worked with us in solving these cases. As I feel that uh, the students and faculty, if you can put proper uh, interest and in research, you can solve such wonderful cases very easily. If you have any queries, is open for discussion. This is my contact. Thank you very much for your patient listening. I hope I, am more, did I started late uh, <coughs> because due to some other reasons, but I think uh, um, I lived up to your expectation morning session. So I made you to understand the importance of IT manufacturing biomedical. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, it is open for discussion. Thanks for your wonderful session, sir. Always your sessions were resourceful and interesting as well. Uh, there is one Thank question. you, sir. There is one question from Nitin Chandra Manas, sir. Is there any health issues? In Jain GL after implant. In crown and bridge practice when we use yeah. is there any health issues for long term for after implant? Salman Shah Kadri. So right, I am going to see that sir. Is there any health issue for long term after implant? Uh, which cranioplasty implant you are talking about, uh, Mr. Chandra Manas, Nitin Chandra Manas? Yes. No, as such, until now, it will be put in 2013, there are no issues until now. So, until now, there is some kind of other infections happen, there may be a problem. But until now, there is no any, we did not hear any kind of issues from that uh, implants. And Jane JL is telling in crown and bridge practice when we use SLS, DMLS, the connection region. Pontic region and retainer walls are coming with different bulk of thickness or thickness. Thicker region will undergo more contraction upon cooling. This can lead to distortion of framework. The parameters adjustment in machine for percentage of contraction for any material may be same. How we can prevent this kind of distortion? Crown and bridge practice, especially in long span bridge, 
and full mouth rehabilitation it seems a challenge without compromising precision is it possible to print long span framework sir could you please explain about this it's a very big question so dental applications uh, uh, you mean to say uh, this is having sls or dmls the uh, sls you not use no metal based one you use either dmls or slm you use so definitely you have to take care of the shrinkage effect of this materials which are using for that application based on the shrinkage elements you have to plan your uh, your structure and you can have to produce that one so uh, so distortion how to prevent it you have to take care of the shrinkage how the distortion happens based on the material you are for example you are using titanium or you are using nickel cobalt chromium or some other biocompatible stainless steel also you have some alloys which are biocompatible so when you take you have to take care of those shrinkage elements and uh, try to prevent it okay please share your contact details already i uh, given in my slide it's uh, you can send me a mail my mail id is uh, sivaramakrishna.l at the rate ucuou.edu or you can use my contact number 9849867046 but that may be instead of directly calling uh, you can put an whatsapp or send them an sms or better to send a mail when you call maybe in meeting or some other thing so any more questions sir uh, anyone want to interact directly they can also switch on their video and interact yes any questions any if you want to ask any questions queries or discuss something you can directly ask speaker our speaker is very uh, enthusiastic to give your uh, 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 to give the answers to your questions please mute and uh, mute yourself unmute yourself and please ask the questions so you can give feedback also if you have anything to tell you can also give you can also give suggestions to me how to improve further let them introduce themselves and they can speak So there is one question how can we print endoscopic disc using polyjet endoscopic disc the disc i think they are asking about the disc which you have showed in the endoscopic uh, yeah we have used fdm FDS. you can also go for a polyjet but the uh, why it's very costly you know so you we went for fdm process basically it is a model so we want we are not putting anything inside human body so for practice only we are making that kit so making it fdm is easier but you can print in uh, polyjet or same model you can convert stl file you can send it to the polyjet and you can print it there is another question from mr khalid what material used for printing finger as you shown in the video i think they are asking about your uh, research work which you have carried on in your ccdd answer which material is used for uh, printing the finger printer Ah, uh, that is we use PLA, PLA, polylactic acid, PLA, finger prosthetics. Any other questions? Okay, if not, I can. Please raise your hands or you can ask questions. Sir, there is a question from Mr. Salman Shah Khadri. Uh, can we sense and eat as usual if we uh, implant the teeth? What, sir? After implantation of the teeth, sir, so uh, we will going to sense the food or taste like that he is asking. Uh, whether we will going to have any... After food. implanting the... Teeth. Uh. We will going to have the same um, sense uh, before the, uh, the implant, or uh, I will going to have some uh, effects. Oh, okay, the implant, how accurate is it? As good as the natural teeth? Natural yeah, mostly with 3D printing, you are getting uh, almost it cannot be 100% natural teeth, but it's now almost nearer. It appears like a natural teeth only. The material also now improved, and uh, it's uh, almost it's like a natural teeth, the functionality, everything. But 100%, you cannot say it's like a natural. 
definitely it will it is it is better than the earlier versions of implant which was made with other conventional so far better than the earlier accuracy wise or finish wise everything is better but only cost is the only factor which is higher than the conventional so but the durability and everything is higher we will not going to because have because because the accuracy is good, no, you need not again remove that implant and put it every time. Yes. So the accuracy is good, that's why the longevity is also high using 3D printed. So, is there any questions? I once again thank uh, Dr. L. Shivram Krishna, Joint Director, Associate Professor, Swan University, Hyderabad, for uh, giving a wonderful, resourceful, and interesting lecture on biomedical applications of 3D printing. I would like to highlight some of the key points. He first given the necessity of uh, 3D printing in the biomedical applications, giving uh, introduction about the software, blender, mesh mixer, and uh, giving the introduction of the flat force printer and the fractured in the skin or the skull uh, using the craniplastic surgery. And he has given a wonderful difference between the traditional craniplastic surgery as well as the uh, nowadays, which we are going to use using the 3D printing, and uh, the, one of the interesting session was uh, sir in endoscopic lumbar dystrophy. That was again a wonderful lecture and uh, interesting, and uh, with various case studies like conjoint case, which is using the mimic software and uh, cheval lithography process. Uh, now the ESA they have uh, solved the problems. Uh, the uh, other case studies like uh, your sunshine hospitals and care hospital using. Uh, with 3D printing technology, we have solved the uh, real challenging problems which is uh, which was faced by the patients. Uh, so I once again thank sir for your wonderful and interesting session. Hope most of the uh, participants have benefited and uh, they will going to use your uh, uh, this uh, work and they can proceed or carry forward your work uh, in near future. I thanks once again sir. Thank you sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank, Thank you. you sir. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.